All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. The first thing we'll do is, uh, you guys all ready? You guys all good? All right, uh, Dr. Grover will uh, start things from Grand Island Public Schools. Thank you all for being here and watching us live on Facebook. This is Dr. Grover, Superintendent of Grand Island Public Schools. The leadership of Grand Island Schools and Mayor Steele are here to inform our community of our school's responses to COVID-19. Each of the five school districts representing Grand Island will share their plan, and the mayor will share about the impact of COVID-19 and the collective efforts required by our city. We all have the same goal in mind, and that's keeping our students, our staff, and our community safe. None of us take the trust that you have granted us for granted. Each of us here today will show our school's plan for the near future. We have all been in communication throughout this past week as we plan. However, each of us, we have our own unique situations to consider. As has been evident across the country this week, these changes are happening very rapidly. And we encourage you to stay connected to your specific school district for timely updates. Each of us has also been in contact with the state, regional, and local health and government officials, as well as the Nebraska Department of Education. It is with the advice and guidance of all of these entities that we have made our plans. For Grand Island Public Schools specifically, here is our plan. We will follow the guidance given by Governor Ricketts and Commissioner Bloomstead this morning and keep school open as scheduled for next week. We will be taking extra precautions to keep our staff and students safe. First and foremost, if your child is not feeling well, if they are ex experiencing a fever over 100 degrees, experiencing flu-like symptoms or cough, keep them at home. This is of vital importance. You can also visit our website for more information. Also, if your student has traveled to an area defined by the CDC as an at-risk area, including international travel, or if they have been exposed to someone who is known to have contracted or been infected by COVID-19, please keep them at home. In this case, we're asking our parents to self-quarantine students at home for 14 days from their most recent contact or travel. We do not want parents to worry about attendance if their student is not feeling well or if they are at risk. This same message has been presented to our GIPS staff. We don't want our staff worrying about whether or not they're gonna get paid versus staying healthy. We have put parameters in place to ensure that their compensation as well as their benefits are secured. We're taking the additional steps needed to keep our kids safe. And that includes counseling any non-essential activities until further notice, as well as increasing our cleaning and disinfection measures. For a complete list of the steps that we are taking, please go to gips.org slash COVID-19. To help us in handling all of the communication around this issue, we're asking parents to fill out a form on our website if they're requesting to keep their child home. Also, if you have specific questions, the fastest way that you can get an answer from us and to help us track our communication channels is also to utilize our Let's Talk service on our GIPS website. Once again, safety is our priority. Together, we can help mitigate the virus and keep our students, our staff, and our community safe and to keep them well and keep them thriving. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Jeff Edwards, Superintendent of Northwest Public Schools, and uh, thank you Dr. Grover and Grand Island Public Schools for putting together this uh, opportunity to come and speak to you today. Uh, at Grand Island Northwest Public Schools, our plan right now 
is to, uh, as Dr. Grover said, continue working with our health department as well as our neighboring school. We are staying in session. Uh, activities are going to continue as uh, normally scheduled until we hear something different. Uh, <clears throat> and to echo Dr. Grover's comments, um, you know, if you have a student or a staff member that is uh, sick or showing signs and, and symptoms of either influenza or the uh, coronavirus, you know, do your due diligence, see medical professionals, uh, stay home, and the biggest thing is communicate with the school. Um, obviously, if we have students that have, uh, you know, compromised immune systems, communicate with the school, we'll make the necessary provisions uh, to keep students and staff safe. And um, at this time, that's the plan for Northwest Public Schools. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mr. Jordan Engel, and I currently serve as the principal of Grand Island Central Catholic Schools here in Grand Island. I'd like to say that it's truly a privilege to be here. It is a privilege to be acting in solidarity with all of these other fantastic administrators. Please rest assured that all of us have the same commitment to academic excellence in Grand Island. Uh, the only priority that all of us share above the academic well-being of our students is the safety and health not only of our students, but of all of the citizens of Grand Island. To that end, I must echo the sentiments of my fellow administrators in saying that students who are sick should indeed stay home. Grand Island Central Catholic will remain in session. We ask that for any further communication, you rely only on official school communication, and that is very important. Uh, misinformation is possibly uh, the second biggest foe here behind the illness that has beleaguered our country. Uh, when I woke up this morning, my wife uh, came to me distraught to let me know that Betty White uh, was a victim to coronavirus, which of course ended up being false. Uh, Betty White let us know she was all fine. Thank goodness she's a national treasure, I'll tell you what. But um, that misinformation um, that, that I somewhat joke about is actually a very real danger uh, to our society at this time. So any official school communication that comes from Grand Island Central Catholic will be posted, of course, on our Facebook page. It will be available on our website, gicentralcatholic.org. It will also become available to all students and parents via remind messaging and one call messaging. But for the time being, it is the plan of Grand Island Central Catholic to remain in session um, one of the things that the Commissioner of Education and the Governor uh, stressed this morning is that hours aren't going to be so important, and we know that. We know that the priority right now is not making sure that we hit a certain number of hours or a certain number of assessments. Our priority right now is making sure that we find that perfect balance between making our students academically successful, but also keeping them safe, and we've committed to that. So please continue to stay up to date. This is a very volatile situation. Uh, things seem to be changing not only by the hour, but almost by the minute. As of right now, Grand Island Central Catholic Schools will remain in session. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Timothy Leach and I'm here from Hartland Lutheran High School. Um, I want to assure you that it is um, indeed, as Jordan said, an honor to be here to speak to you about our student safety here in Grand Island. And it's been a blessing to work with in the Lutheran system with Trinity Lutheran, as well as our public school and Catholic school administrators to put our students' safety at the forefront. At Heartland Lutheran, we understand that we are created for relationships and therefore we intend to remain open in the classroom and face-to-face -face education for as long as possible. If and when the time comes that the schools would have to close due to the coronavirus, we will intend on going online with our education. We've already practiced that setup and we are ready to enact that if the need be. The number one <coughs> factor here for us is our student safety and we wanna make sure that that is at the forefront of everything we do while continuing to provide education to our students. We'd also like to remind everybody Again, as Jordan said, to echo that, that false information is a large trap here. So all communication coming from Heartland Lutheran will come from our website and from our grading system. And then we will post things on our Facebook page as needed. We stand in solidarity with our schools 
and we continue to work and communicate on a daily basis with the Grand Island schools as well as the community. And we would like to remind people that in these times that we have a God who is faithful and is there for our refuge and relief. And we ask that you keep that ever in your minds as you look for wisdom and strength in these uncertain times. So again, thank you to our other school administrators. Thank you. And let's just make sure that we keep our student safety at the forefront and do our best to keep them in our prayers. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jarita Stair, principal at Trinity Lutheran School here in Grand Island. I would just like to also express that we deeply appreciate the collaborative effort that has been demonstrated by all the Grand Island schools. As has been stated, we are all monitoring the situation and the impact on the area around us. Our common goal is to minimize this impact of the virus on our schools and community. As far as school closing, we will continue to be open as of now, but it's a day-to-day, hour-to-hour situation. The thing that would cause us to close would be under the recommendation of the state or county health department or under the guidelines stated by the governor today. In the case that a student staff member or family member of a student or staff of our Trinity Lutheran School community was confirmed positive, we would communicate that and determine at that time independently if we would close and have online instruction rather than face-to-face classes. We would make sure that that case then was properly contained. We will be in close communication with all Grand Island schools and especially with Heartland Lutheran as we share many of the same families. We have spent several hours today and in the past week preparing for online learning communities and our teachers are prepared to do that if and when that time arises. In the event of an extended school closure, each class will have a tab on our website. You can find that information at www.tlsgi.org. Those tabs will become active if that situation presents itself. Otherwise, the events that we will have, as far as if they're non-essential, will be canceled and we will be updating those, those websites and those links as the time becomes available. If your student has a compromised immune system, as we have stated, please contact the school and we will handle those situations on a case-by-case basis. We will continue to communicate with parents via Fast Direct, which is our information system, and on the school website. In this situation, we ask for everyone to pray for peace, wisdom, and divine protection as we navigate these uncharted waters. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Roger Steele. I am the mayor of Grand Island. I want to thank these school leaders for their efforts to protect our children, our sons and daughters of Grand Island, our students. They are most precious to us, and I know that these student leaders have their safety and their well-being forefront in their minds. Coronavirus is an extraordinary public health matter. I want you to know the city of Grand Island stands ready to help the people of Grand Island. The city is constantly monitoring the spread of the disease. To my knowledge, there has been no reported case of coronavirus in Grand Island. But this is something we watch and monitor continuously. To combat coronavirus, I need the help of the people of Grand Island. All citizens and businesses should wipe down and disinfect all handles and countertops. Hand washing, frequent hand washing, is a proven means of stopping the spread of disease. 
And as it pertains to older adults and people with existing medical conditions, they should practice what is known as social distancing. Avoid crowds and gatherings. Don't go to places where you can encounter other people if you do not have to. And if you do not feel well, stay home or tell your health care providers and follow their instructions. The most important thing to remember is the city of Grand Island will use all of its resources to respond to the coronavirus. The city of Grand Island always has the best interest of its citizens at heart. The city of Grand Island always faces challenges head on with the knowledge that we have the personnel and the training to confront threats such as the coronavirus. Stay safe, be smart, practice social distancing, wash your hands, use prudence. This is not a time to be afraid. It is a time to be smart about your health and about the health and well-being of all of us. Thank you. We'll bring everybody back up now, and if the media has any specific questions for any of them, um, you can ask and they can answer. I just wondered for, I know that Tam and Gary have mentioned online, do the rest of you have any other plans in mind at all at this time? Absolutely. Uh, on behalf of Grand Island Public Schools, our team has been working for, for over a, a month uh, planning for this. Uh, we do have the capacity to be, provide an own learning, uh, learning platform for our students. We do recognize that some of our students may or may not have access to internet and where uh, they may experience that digital divide. So in addition to our online platforms, our teams are working right now to assemble packets that will be able to go home with students so that we can continue to create an atmosphere where they can engage in academic opportunities. So thankfully at Central Catholic, uh, we're in a position where all of our students have Chromebooks that they are allowed to exit the building with um, on a daily basis. So we're really gonna rely on that one-to-one -one technology piece if we get in a position where um, having class within the classroom is no longer a possibility. Now, there, I know that there are a lot of questions that have been um, asked and a lot of questions that will be asked in terms of equity um, for online courses. Uh, Dr. Grover kind of touched on that, um, providing packets for some students while other students will readily have those online resources available. Um, I encourage people to seek out more information on this if you are curious. Um, there are certainly a lot of resources out there that could help families be prepared for this, but know that as schools, um, not only are we sharing ideas in terms of how to prepare for a virtual education experience, um, but we're going to have a, a very real field trial of these experiences very soon. I feel like I'm saying ditto quite a bit. But, um, <laughs> no, we. Uh, at Northwest, we deliver uh, classes in multiple platforms already, so we've had the conversations of how that would look. Uh, obviously, if, if we end up uh, you know, going into a situation where we have to close, some of that will be determined by length and, and duration of that potential closure. So we'll continue those discussions and prepare, and, and like Jordan, you know, we're at Northwest, we're one-to-one we're -one in most of our grades, so uh, you know, we'll have that luxury. but. Again, it's the how connected are they, our students, once they get home and, and having those conversations and figuring all that out as well.
Has the question of childcare, you know, around, you know, especially in the community of Grand Island, there's a lot of, you know, families low income, any of that kind of, you know, is that kind of something that you guys went with your plan for today, you know? Obviously, you guys are taking it as a case-by-case -case basis of situation. Um, you know, has any of those kind of, you know, came up in terms of, like, childcare for families? <laughs> team will certainly come uh, and answer as well. Uh, we realize that anytime we have a school closure that it impacts um, our families and they have to look for ways to secure child care. Um, safety is our top priority. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we are taking the necessary steps. Um, at this point, we feel like that we can keep school open. Um, I would have to say that's not a deciding factor uh, in us keeping schools open. We just feel like at this time, there's not an identified case right in our immediate area. Um, and with the additional steps that we're taking uh, to ask parents to um, monitor the self-care of their students as well as being self-aware, understand if they are experiencing any type of symptoms to report that to us and we will continue to monitor that. Um, I was on a call today uh, with several nonprofits from across uh, the state as well as the Commission of Education. And so I, knew, I do know that there is a statewide effort uh, that's being considered right now where people are looking to form um, a coalition of people that can support uh, our families, whether it's with food or additional supplies that they need, as well as child care. And so we look to uh, continue to be involved in those conversations uh, here uh, in Grand Island. Just yesterday, our foundation executive director, she came to us uh, also saying that they stand ready uh, to help us uh, in the time that we have to close as well. I have a question kind of off of that for you. Um, speaking of uh, child care and, and the food you had said a little bit, um, you guys provide two meals a day for these children. Um, what is, can you elaborate a little bit on what you guys are gonna be able to do for that, for the children? Yeah, absolutely. And so we will, in, in the event uh, that we have a school closure, uh, our child nutrition department, uh, they are a part of our COVID-19 crisis uh, team right now and they have a plan in, pl in place and we will have identified locations where students will be able to continue to receive meals uh, from us. Uh, it will operate very similar to uh, some of the summer feeding programs that we offer. Uh, even with that, we know that there will continue to be a need for additional food. Um, and as Mayor Steele uh, mentioned earlier, that will be an opportunity for our community organizations to, to come forward, to step forward, uh, and to be part of the providing those uh, food opportunities uh, to reduce food insecurities for our students. Now, do you all have a similar plan as GIPS? Okay. I can kind of speak to that a little bit. So um, I have a, I have a uh, four-year-old and a two-year-old who are in childcare. Um, and I have several core teachers who have children in the same childcare. And I know that Tim has uh, kids in the same childcare that I have as well. Um, and that's a very real consideration um, that has to be taken any time school is canceled, not only in this particular instance, but even for a snow day. Um, those are very real considerations to have. And in speaking with the director of, of my own uh, um, children's daycare, I know that their plan is to follow our lead. And um, you know, I also know that a lot of my students who, are, who have younger siblings are going to become primary caretakers uh, from 8 o'clock to 3.30 in the absence of any other educational experience, which is another consideration to, to uh, put on top of the virtual education experience is how do you balance that with being a full-time uh, caregiver. But um, I look at, you know, Nebraska's strong and Grand Island is strong. You look at what we've overcome in the last uh, 12 months, actually just a year ago with the flooding, and you look at what other Midwestern cities are doing right now. I know that Sioux Falls is really setting some trends with the uh, system of nonprofits they've put together uh, to feed students. And I don't doubt even for a second um, that those plans will fall into place. And as Dr. Grover mentioned, those conversations have already started. So I, I have full confidence in the community of Grand Island uh, with Mayor Steele and the other leaderships uh, that we have throughout the community to provide whatever, whatever needs to be provided for the best of the community um, during challenging times. And I would echo those remarks, and I again want to emphasize that I think it's a huge blessing that you have all of us communicating together and working together on this decision. We all understand that there's a domino effect across the community and really across the region if we decide that we need to close the schools. And the importance of working together is that you know that the entire community is in our concern, and we won't 
close schools unless we absolutely have to. And at that point, we will continue to communicate and work together to provide the best we can for the parents, students, and families of Grand Island. This being my first year here in Grand Island and at Northwest, that's one of the things that I've appreciated about the leadership in the school community here is that we communicate on whether it's a snow day or, you know, heaven forbid, you know, last year floods. Um, that kind of communication, they open dialogue and, you know, we don't always always get along or agree with everything, but we have that open communication and, and uh, in the end come up with a consensus on what we're going to do moving forward. Um, yeah. Um, can we talk about activities? I know, especially for the high schools, uh, proms are coming up. You know, other you know other event activities. What is happening? You know, are those still happening? Are those kind of just up in the air, monitoring case by case? What's the next step? You know, you got it. You're on it. Tim said he's going to cover all proms. Yeah. <laughs> proms, a five million dollar question. Um, right now, I, I think it's fair to say, if, as fluid as everything is, we're we're taking everything on a case by case basis. Um, non essential activities um, are definitely being reviewed at all times and in discussion amongst all of us, um, both within our schools and within the group of administrators. Um, I think it's fair to say that you will see some cancellations of those activities as we move forward. Um, as far as prom goes, I don't think anybody has a definite decision based on that right now. I know we do not. Um, I know this weekend we um, opening tonight is our school musical and next weekend Northwest opens theirs and those are still planned to go on um, as scheduled at this time unless of course we would get a directive or need to change that. Uh, but at this time, I would say it's a case-by-case -case basis, and we will put health and safety above those activities. I, I think you saw some of that come out this midweek when the NSA <clears throat> closed down um, the boys' basketball tournament to everybody and just went to immediate families, which, by the way, good luck tonight. Thank so, you. Um, we'll be watching on TV since we can't attend. So. Um, but uh, again, you know, non-essential activities is, is, you know, part of uh, what we're taking a look at, and it'll be a case by case. And again, we'll look to our leadership at the health department and state level as well in making those determinations. I know uh, state speech, uh, district and state state speech has been postponed at this time, and and that's kind of part of the conversation is, do we need to flat out cancel, or are there things that we can postpone and look at? you know, as we learn more about the, uh, the virus moving forward. So uh, just like uh, all of the other districts uh, in regards to the non-essential activities, uh, we've already put out notification that they will be canceled in Grand Island Public Schools. Um, as far as any after school activities, we will continue to host where it just involves our students and our staff but we are also uh, prohibiting any outside agencies to come in and offer um, any activities uh, to our students uh, with the goal to uh, limit uh, any outside people outside of our staff, our students coming into uh, our schools, into our organization. So I have another question. Um, what situation, if any, um, other than what the governor suggested, would you guys consider still closing down, if that makes sense? So that's um, kind of a conversation that's ongoing. And if there's a, if there's a, a silver lining um, in this cloud, it's the fact that um, it's, it's definitely done a very good thing for communication between the school districts right now. Um, and this solidarity is, is very meaningful in that regard. Um, we've had the opportunity not only to have a couple of virtual meetings this week, but also meet in person today prior to um, us speaking with you guys uh, to kind of begin discussing what that looks like. But again, I cannot stress enough the fluidity of this situation. Um, you know, we're gonna be in constant contact. Uh, one of the nice things about the digital age is that we can put together a Zoom meeting in a, in a matter of minutes, um, which has actually happened a couple of times this week. I would uh, say that, you know, those, the, the guidelines set out by the commissioner and the governor this morning were, you know, if there's a confirmed case within your ESU, 
um, or if we reach a certain 1% threshold within the state, uh, we would be looking at a short-term closure, and they also mentioned some longer-term closures. Um, but at the end of the day, we also realize as administrators within our school, uh, we have the ultimate responsibility of providing a safe environment for our students. So with that in mind, uh, the communication between all of us will stay strong. Um, as more information becomes available to us in terms of when this sickness will reach Grand Island and what degree the impact will be in Grand Island, those decisions will be made as a group um, and the communication will stay strong between a lot of us. I have a question for the mayor. Um, oh. Sorry, real quick. Um, I know uh, there's, there's some couple different varying outliers. Um, I know Jeff, for instance, has students from across the region as well. Uh, Jarita at Trinity and, and I at Heartland Lutheran have students from outside of our community. So that's something special that we have to pay attention to. Um, Heartland Lutheran, for example, has students from as far west as Kearney and St. Paul, Aurora, and then Hastings. So we've got a wider circle that, that we're watching um, as well as just Grand Island. So um, it's a central Nebraska issue. And I think that's true for all of us up here. So there are some different guidelines other than just what was laid out. But again, that comes back to what Jordan said in the communication between all of the administrators. Okay. Yeah, my question for you is, um, have you spoken with other um, health officials in the area um, about what, to see if they're ready in case you know, there were a case to arise in Grand Island. Yes, my contacts have been with Teresa Anderson at the Central District Health Department. And uh, I've talked to her four times today. And she is my primary resource for up-to-date information about uh, what is going on nationally and locally. So that is who I reach out to because uh, when it comes to the response to this incident, uh, Central Nebraska Health Department is a leader in that regard. While you're up there, Roger, as of right now, city hall, city buildings, maintaining, gonna stay open at this time? The city of Grand Island will stay open throughout this. Now, one thing, I may restrict places where people tend to gather for non-essential purposes. For instance, the community meeting room uh, is used a lot in the basement of City Hall for things just like public meetings that are not essential to the function of the city. I will decide in the future whether I will close those. Uh, just because of what I said earlier, we all have to practice social distancing. We should avoid uh, gathering in groups. But I guarantee you this, the city of Grand Island is always open. The city of Grand Island always responds. The city of Grand Island is always there for the people of Grand Island in case of an emergency. We never close. Since as we talk about school closure, uh, I do want to uh, come back to the original statements that we share in regards to our request uh, for parents to make sure that they are aware of any symptoms uh, that their students may be experiencing. Uh, we have asked our parents again to complete a form online and we are asking them uh, if they have traveled um, and they are exhibiting these symptoms to make sure that they stay home uh, for 14 days. And outside of our request, we are also aware that uh, the CDC, as well as our central health department, that they may also request for students to stay at home. So they may have a mandatory quarantine uh, request as well. Going off on that, um, what you just said, um, if a student had to be you know, quarantined you know, for 14 days or anything like that, um, are those absences counted as excused absences? Sick, you know, how does that all work, I guess, for the students and the record? Yeah, and I think the commissioner set the stage for that today where uh, we are not asking our families to worry about attendance. I believe that the state is still working through the protocols uh, for that, but we will not be sending out any letters 
um, asking for court appearances for any of those students and we just simply do not want our parents, our students, our staff worried about attendance. We would take care of the paperwork and the red tape on our end. Okay. Any other questions? I, I think I would mention on that, uh, just make sure that the families communicate with the school. Um, if, if you have a child or a family member who is sick or ill and you need that child to stay home, um, please do just let the school know so we know what's going on. Otherwise, it causes other problems. Um, but again, we're, all of us are here to partner with parents for their children's education. So we wanna make sure and let parents know that that final call is with them and we will support support you as a family when you make that decision. Just make sure and communicate with the school. I do have a question for the um, private school administrators. Um, you know, being that you guys are funded, um, you know, privately, um, if families, if, you know, things start to shut down, parents can go to work and they're not able to then pay tuition, do you guys have a plan in need for that funding? Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, we, we fully intend, um, again, depending on length of shutdown and everything, to continue our educational experience online. And we understand that that's not the same as face-to-face, -face, but I feel uh, both schools are well-equipped. I know Jarita is, is highly educated in, in the use of online classes um, and actually is able to teach teachers how to do that. So we're incredibly blessed that way to do that. I know Jordan's school is set up to do that as well. Um, so we intend to continue the educational experience for our students and provide the best educational environment we can throughout, no matter what happens going forward. Um, obviously health and safety is first, but at this point we intend to continue the education, so we intend to continue all school function as far as the classroom goes, although we're not sure what the environment may be for that. I guess my question on that would be like, if parents weren't able to make the tuition payments, I guess, for that, like if that's gonna affect or hinder, I guess, academics moving forward. Uh, so we, we will work with all families based upon their need um, throughout this time. We understand that there are other priorities that may have to come first before education. So we are equipped to, to deal with those. Um, and those will be on a case by case and a school by school basis, but I think all all three of the schools represented here today would tell you that we're gonna work with families to our best ability when it comes to do that. Um, and we will function our best within our budgetary guidelines for a school to be able to support our, our families the best we can. I would just like to confirm what he said with us as well. Our, our biggest priority is education and of course the safety of those students. So again, that would be a case by case basis. We've had situations like that in the past if a family's had a fire or been affected by floods and then they come to us and we work out a plan with them through Adopt-A-Student or tuition assistance. So, you know, again, that would be a case by case. I'm not willing to make a blanket statement, you know, for everybody <laughs> at this point. But if, if people are affected, yes, we, we are very concerned with that and the well-being of their family and, and we want to help them out because, because that's what we do. As Tim said, relationships are, are very important and we want to keep that, that bond and that, and that communication going. So a lot of these things, there is not a precedent for this. I wish I had a manual that I could open, but there's just not one. And we just kind of, and we're working together, we're communicating, running things by each other. So the, the beauty of that is that there's a power in the group and we can really get a lot of wisdom from this group that you see here in moving forward. So a lot of those things are going to be day to day. Right now we say we're open, that may change at 5 p.m. I mean, it's just that fluid and that, um, so we just have to be vigilant and be ready, and I think we all are. And then a lot of that is just a case by case and considering those things with the wisdom that we have. So, and I think everybody would probably, you know, reiterate that same thing, that, that that's kind of our, our mood moving forward. Yeah. Somebody asked us on our Facebook Live, uh, we're streaming this right now, what about the field house and GI? Does somebody have an answer for them on that? Is that staying open? As of now, it's staying open. Depending on circumstances, I will reevaluate that. And that is because that's a recreational facility. It is not, a, it is not an emergency responding uh, arm of city government. 
but for now the field house is open. But I will evaluate what to do with that on the basis that that is recreation and, uh, and on the basis that I want to avoid people gathering in groups unnecessarily. Thank you. I did want to go off on something that Dr. Grover said. Um, I know you talked about you know not having non-essential people coming in and out of the building, but will um, pick up and drop off procedures um, be changing to limit access to you know people coming in and out of school buildings and other? Yeah. yeah so um, with our normal pick up and drop off right now, we have very limited people coming in. If they are, they're coming to the front office. Uh, we will continue to evaluate that situation too, uh, with a goal to uh, continue to reduce. Uh, the amount of people from the outside, outside of our students and our staff being able to enter our buildings. Anything else, anybody? That it? All right, well, thank all these folks. Uh, thank all you guys for being here and watching. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, follow up with them through the means that they talked about and through gips.org slash COVID-19 and our Let's Talk. Uh, thank you all.